Welcome to the Warren Cycling Podcast. My name is Dean Warren. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia today. And I'm Randy Warren. I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, I feel like my voice is a little hoarse, but... It sounds like it is, too. I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't, well, I've been just having fun the last couple of days uh, out in the wilderness, I guess, around Ocala, Florida, Central Florida, kayaking on the Silver River, and then mountain biking yesterday in the Santos mountain bike um, extensive network of trails, which is also near Ocala. And it's a place that I used to take Taylor when he was young to go riding. And I think they'd probably add more trails and enhance some of the other parts. But we just we just rode a small corner of it. And like usually when I'm mountain biking, I don't do it so often that I kind of forget that you have to really concentrate, pay attention all the time because <laughs> I tried to write a feature and it looked like I was going to be fine with it. And then my handlebars, I don't know if they're wider than most handlebars, but I hit a tree. I mean, I was lined up for the last little section because it's a small plank, like six, eight inches wide. So you don't have a lot of room to go on it. And I was lined up probably for the center of it. And then my left handlebar hit a tree and I had to face plant it. So my handlebars and mountain bikes are very wide these days and all, all of them yeah very wide like a third wider than what they used to be probably and oh. and, no bar, and no bar ends so at least you're not uh, catching things your bar ends but yeah but, um, yeah no they're, they're really wide yeah for sure and you, you do have to pay attention a lot you know there's stuff well there's them. always rocks and roots and those things yeah. and yeah you get it, used to it too and the more you ride the more you get used to how wide the handlebars are but you're right they always and the bikes are easier. Like for now, I've got full suspension 29er now, and so it's so much easier to go over those rocks and roots. Full suspension, and yeah. Yeah, especially even climbing than you used to have. So yeah, the problem I think is too that I ride my mountain bike too much on the the trail, the paved trails that I'm. I might have even locked out the front fork. I was like, that front fork locked out. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't I don't ride much mountain bike, and usually it's at a, I ride with Isabelle, and it's at a pretty leisurely pace. It's like going for a walk in the woods mostly, but but the, the flow is not the most demanding train terrain for mountain biking even either there too. Yeah, so for yeah. you, probably actually a full suspension would be way overkill. A hard tail is probably the best thing for what yeah. you're riding. Yeah. But do be careful. I have to be careful. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know. Ah, you know, I, I, okay. I watch YouTube videos. We watch YouTube videos to catch up on racing, right? Races. I've been yeah. watching the highlights of the UAE tour, which is, um, Another sprint stage day, one more tomorrow. I did, oh, the Warren Cycling Podcast episode. Oh, man. I didn't even look at that. 347? Sounds uh, about right. Around here. 347. It is the towards the end of February, February uh, 23rd. And it's really, I mean, I've, I've got behind me the start list. So Omlot Newsblad. It's the opening weekend of the Classics in Belgium. It's really, really a lot of people might consider this is the very beginning of the, of the real racing, although I've had mm -hmm. some pretty, pretty good racing up till now. Yeah. So uh, I just lost my train of thought. Where it was is I? 347. <laughs> so. It is 347. All right. Yeah. So um, UAE tour. Uh, you know, uh, we're very much in favor of um, emphasizing the talent that we have coming out of the United States. So we're really pro-American for our riders. And and I, I kind of look at almost all all the races when it's possible to look in light of, of right, who's doing well um, for the Americans, because that's maybe our side. And and while Brandon McNulty, he won a, uh, a time trial this week, a UAE yeah. tour is a world tour status, so a world it tour was time trial. the overall leader for a while there. Yeah. And he took the overall lead uh, just for a day, though, right? The next day, uh, the, the shorter of the two climbs that they have at the UAE tour. And um, UAE uh, Team Emirates, you know, that's their main sponsor, so they... They are really targeting this, although without their their big star, Teddy Bagacha, who's done it uh, up until this year, right? He's done it the last couple of years. Or even Adam Yates, you know, who was there. He was supposed to be their designated winner this year. Right. They crashed and had a concussion and it had to drop out. Yeah. I didn't, I was hoping it wasn't like a teammate bumped him or something like Brandon McNulty or something. <laughs> yeah. no. They ride together, but it wasn't because he didn't all. even know. He didn't, they heard on the crash, he was close to Jay Vine. I, I saw that Brandon said, Did I hear that right? Adam Yates. Actually, Adam Yates didn't even know he crashed. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I got a concussion, um, rode with another 36 clouders. They had to tell him to stop five times. Um, yeah, it's a, I hope, hopefully he'll heal and be better, but that, 
is a, a race that he was targeting for sure. But he was actually third in the time trial. He was going to make have some ground to make up from his teammates because uh, Jay Vine was just a couple seconds behind Brandon McNulty. And actually, ultimately, um, on the first of the two climbing days, Brandon um, fell back a little. The um, decathlon, uh, Aja de Jure Le Mundial, uh, put in a uh, like a, a lead out for Ben O'Connor up at the top of the, of the towards the end and Ben O'Connor pulled through and man, great second win for him this year. And uh, he's, he's not in the lead though. Jay Vine's got a, just a couple second lead over and Brandon McNulty is still sitting in third. So yeah. we'll see what happens on Sunday, but it's more, more climbers climb on Sunday and, and Brandon McNulty is just a little bit bigger guy. So I don't figure that he's going to, Probably it won't be. I think it'll be up to Jay Vine for UAE to, well, to win. Yeah, then they'll be riding for Jay Vine now for sure. Yeah. I think if yeah, McNulty the lead. Lead ahead, then they would have ridden for McNulty. But since and it was interesting too, I guess it was you know a lot of attacking going on at the end, and like you said, the Kathleen Azizir really put him to the sword, and Jay Vine was the one that could respond to it. McNulty couldn't quite respond. Yeah. But and, and I think Jay Vine actually said initially he kind of looked where is McNulty and maybe hesitated a little bit, and so he. he he didn't jump right away thinking that, oh, my teammate, you know, who's in the lead. And where is he first before he responded? Yeah, I think they were, again, riding for him, yeah. But then he knew he had to cover it, so he had to try to go for the win. But speaking of Americans, Matthew Riccatelli uh, had a great exactly. ride that day. Yep. Seven, seventh. Seventh in that yep. group. So it was all a group of five seconds back, and then uh, McNulty was 14 seconds back, so just a slightly further back. It was a pretty big group together, so McNulty only 40 seconds back was 18th, so... It was quite of um, a, a decent group, and like you said, the more decisive climb will come on Sunday yet too. And and I think that McNulty will be there to help Vine. But again, if something happens where Vine's in trouble, then McNulty will be his job because no matter what, UAE wants a UAE winner. So that's the For most sure. important thing here out of this. And since Yates, who I think was their designated leader, um, is out now, it's going to be right up to Vine and McNulty to be one of those two guys to get the win. And since they're first and third on the GC, but Rick Catelli, um, you know, I saw a video from GCN on him this winter riding up Mount Lemon doing these big year intervals where he's doing, geez, I think like five watts, then six watts, then seven watts per kilogram or something like that in 50, 60 RPMs up <laughs> Mount Lemon. And it was very impressive. That, and he looked the calmness that he had doing those kind of watts and those kind of gears, it certainly made him, um, yeah, look like he's ready to, to be, a, you know, take another step up this year. And so yeah, his time trial wasn't very good, so he wasn't in a very good position now overall. But, um, yeah, his climbing is coming along really well. Yeah, maybe Sunday a more climber's climb is going to favor him. it would be interesting yeah. to see how he responds to that, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, writing for Israel Premier Tech and – They've had some decent results so far. Yeah, they, they have. They have been doing At one point, well. they were second or third on the team ranking already this year, but that was a couple weeks ago, so I'm not sure now. I didn't check. I've been checking just sporadically because I don't get a lot of information coming out of the Tour of Rwanda, which is going on. And Most development uh, teams that are there, yeah. I think there's five World Tour teams, but they're sent their development squads, including Chris Froome on the Israel Premier Tech right. development squad. And he got dropped from their team time trial. Um, and hasn't been finishing great, but my understanding is he was taking some huge pulls to the Teen Time trial and wasn't a priority to finish necessarily with him there. So, I think and the individual on. time trial, though, he was over four minutes down, I believe. Oh, I didn't see the individual. Yeah, Pierre yeah. Latour. I think Pierre Latour won that stage. So, for total energy. So, he's there. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, is that William Jr. Le Cerf? Is am I saying that name right? This Sudal quick step young rider who's definitely a name we're going to hear more of. He did well in an earlier race already this year, and he's right up there at the top at the Tour of Rwanda. He's 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 a good up and coming um, Belgian. So uh, Sudal so yeah. quick step, they find right, good but, riders, don't they? Yeah, and the the guy who's leading, uh, Rinder Rinderikin Rinder Rinderik. He's a Belgian though from Sudal quick steps Devo team. And the article I was reading was saying too that we shouldn't. Think oh the Devo team these guys are significantly oh, yeah. lower than the World Tour you know right. that the, the now the development teams are of such high level that you know Sudal's development team could easily be riding as well as some of the World Tour riders so yeah for, but the yeah, second place sure. team though is a is a Bengal WB team you know so an Italian guy but it's interesting because you get a wider variety you know there's an enter in in sixth place overall too so 
um, yeah, it's mostly right now a lot of people are on the same time, but still, it's 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 good to it's good to see. But it, it's an important race because Rwanda they got they've got the world championships coming there, right? Yeah, it's, it's certain. Six? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, they have yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's important for them to uh, run a race. Well, they've been running that race for a long time, but uh, to run it, run it well, and get all the um, logistics and that down well to hold a world championship. Oh, you know, I'm sorry too. I was I was wrong in the GC. I was looking at the wrong at the wrong day. Um, it's Joseph Blackmore, Israel Prima Tech, who's now in the lead. So um, the, a, a Brit. But it's yeah, it's what like a nine stage. It's quite a few stages, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's uh. So they're up to stage <clears throat> six, seven, eight stages. Yeah. So I think I have two more to go. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, sprinting though, I think that's a big uh, topic of discussion. What's going on? Because all yeah. most of the top sprinters, I, I guess, if you're a sprinter that wants to win a sprint um, classic, like on Sunday's Corner Bristol Corn Race, which um, someone can run sprint well out of a smaller group, would have a chance there. But really, a host of big name sprinters at the UA Tour. Some yeah. of the sprints have been a little messy. Um, Tim Merlier looked unbeatable, and maybe he was just beaten today to Olaf Koy because uh, it appeared at the end that he was bouncing on his bike like he had a soft tire, like a flat. Yeah, maybe? yeah, and he so, started pretty far out of position too and he went sprinting into the wind so kind of seemed like he was the, clearly the strongest guy but Koi though did a great sprint <clears throat> anyway, right at the barriers sprint. wasn't he yes and and, and Kevin Kevin let him have a little bit of space too which is interesting because I wonder if he intentionally gave him some space or if he if he just drifted a little bit to his left but uh, Koi jumped from much further back and had to sprint a long way so he was in the wind for a long time but um yeah it was weird because Mirlay Mirlay came from kind of the middle and had to go to the left and went around Sam Wellsford's left into the wind and still it was a few millimeters difference between them. So I think he was kind of like, um, you know, maybe the strongest sprinter today, but didn't, didn't happen to win too. But there's people like, yeah, you know, Fabio yeah. Jackson is here. He wasn't yeah. done anything yet. And he was the yeah. dominant sprinter last year, you know? And so sure. uh, he, of course, now is on DSM instead of, instead of quick step. And so um, he switched teams and, and he's not sprinting that well, but you're right though. I mean, everybody's there, Caden Groves and, you know, Cassani and Welford and Merlier with all Sam, Sam Bennett, who, yeah, doing the uh, is there too? Uh, yeah. Yeah, Grunen Riding. And Sam Bennett's there, who's won some races already too. And then Mark Cavendish, who won a race earlier at Tour of Columbia, he actually had the perfect lead out today from work off and had a jump a little bit early, perhaps, and was in the wind early and was having the lead up to maybe, you know, 75 meters to go or so. And then he's the kind of guy, though, if he's not going to win a sprint, you know, he's not going for the green jersey or anything, so he just sits up and, and fell back to 17th place. But he was he was certainly there, and they set him up better, but he just doesn't have the speed yet, too. Right. Fernando Gaviria is there as well. Ackerman's there. Yeah, Yeah, and Arva Decline um, got second, didn't he, yesterday? He's Arva Decline, right, right yeah. for two, yeah, he's 24. So <laughs> so you've got top, well, Elliot. Ilya Viviani is 26, so so take <laughs> out of the top 26, there's like like half of them are really really good sprinters. Really good sprinters, yeah. It just goes to show you too the difference between them is so small because any one of these guys have won races earlier in the season already and or could win them any chance too. And then you come to this race now where you know it's it's interesting because so many good guys are here. The sprints are more sprint stages, so they're not being softened up. Today it was virtually flat the whole way, so not being thought softened up that much. And then yesterday they had crosswinds that softened people up a little bit. This today not so much. Um, they had perhaps a little bit of crosswinds uh, when Tim um, Degent or Thomas Tim. Degent went down uh, in a around a roundabout. I forget how far it was out. A ways out though too, and and someone tried to split the field when he crashed there. And uh, so yeah, but it's it's it's. You know, it depends on what's happening up until up until the finish too. But this was more of a pure sprinter stage without much win. There was one right turn in the five k to go and one roundabout at 900 meters. But the roundabouts are so wide and the road is so wide coming out of them that uh, yeah, it's it's big a big drag race. Wow. Yeah. So that that'll be interesting. One more sprint tomorrow and then the final uh, climbing stage on Sunday. But I think more eyes are going to be this weekend. 
on the races in, in Belgium. But before we, we talk about those, I see at the picture you've got Jonas Vingengo mm -hmm. um, winning the oh, Grand Camino race, uh, stage two. Stage two. And I saw some headline or some YouTube, something about Jonas Vingengo changing his name. Is that just yes. a joke or is no, it no. true? He added his wife's last name to his name. So it's still Jonas Vingengo and then I forget Milan or something like that, or someone yeah, else. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't show up on his, on his uh, pro cycling stats name yet. But I guess yeah. that was, it was probably just happened. So it's gonna. <laughs> it might be a it's while. It's gonna come. Yeah. 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 But I know it's happened. So he kept his name, middle name, is his last name. And I have a friend who, um, Tim Alexander, who changed. He took. He took. He took his wife's name. So he, you know, I guess she wasn't sure about changing. And he's like, well, I'll just take your name. So it does happen for sure. Um, oftentimes. You know, like my wife put her last name, you know, Kohlberg and to carry our tell Kohlberg added a middle name, her name, and then Warren. So, you know, and certainly the Spanish, you know, they're, they're oh, just tacked uh, on names yeah. left and right, right? So, <laughs> I was listening to something the other day that there was a Spanish guy talking and he said, he goes, of course, uh, yeah, a Spaniard or, uh, yeah, Spaniards are, uh, you, know, you know, are always adding names and he had five last names or something like that too. So he was kind of making fun of it himself, but um, yeah. So he'll, he'll yeah. still be Jonas Vindegaard, probably, you know, known as, but he'll have, like, you know, sometimes the Spaniards will have a couple of names after that, too. So it looks like it's a four-stage race. Started well, out with it, a time trial yesterday. It was neutralized. The time so, trial was neutralized? Yeah, for uh -huh. GC. It was huge wins, and they thought it was dangerous, too dangerous to ride on time trial bikes. So they everybody rode the road bikes. They neutralized the GC. Okay. But they yeah. still let it go for um, individual stage honors. So Vindigo gave up like four minutes or something like that. He barely, he didn't ride hard at all. Um, and Joey Roskamp was in the hot seat for a while. So I, a friend yeah, of mine, so finished nineteenth um, overall. Yeah, but he yeah. was, but he was leading for a little while. And a friend texted me and he said, "Hey, I'm just watching Joey Roskamp from the hot seat." And then, but Josh Dar Tarling, Dar Josh Tarling, Tarling, yeah, I mean, yeah, who was a phenomenal time phenomenal. traveler. Yeah, and he he's won. young. Yeah, and so I'm sure they said. If you want to go for it, go for it. He's probably not in there for the overall. Um, so yeah, he's uh, 20 years old, just 20 years old, and, and he's yeah, got some big time well, trial. Um, yeah, well, Will Barta was fourth, so I guess you can't really re read much into that then. Well, Will Barta's a good time trial too. Yeah. I, I think again, the big GC guys probably did not go for the the time at all because it didn't count towards GC, and you'd, you'd hate to take a risk for no real gain and then. Yeah, you know, for trying to win it, it's great because he has a, you know, gets a gets a um a big win there right away. But if you, you know, again, it it depends on what's important to you. Right. Okay. Well, well, stage two looked like one of those more or less sawtooth type of profiles. Lots of climbs, smaller climbs. Finished on a downhill after a climb, but Jonas Vinka go uh, got thirty seconds on Egan Bernal though. Egan Bernal is this really his comeback year or a little? Cautiously optimistic. He started out well in Colombia, but yeah. to finish second here, um, he looked he looked really good. So I watched I watched yeah. the last you know part of the race. Actually, it's funny because I accidentally watched last year's race first, and last year's race they canceled stage one because of snow. It was terrible weather and it was snow, and so they canceled it. This year they neutralized it because of rain or, or winds. Or I think just winds, hard strong winds. And and last year Vindigo rode away at 2.3 kilometers from the whole field and won by you know 45 seconds or something like that. He just it was an easy win. Yeah, he, he, he crushed it last year. Yeah. yeah, but this year, and actually he won the I think next stage too in last year's race too. So he he was he was winning because I think it's only a three stage stage race. It's not very long, but um. It's four this year. Yeah. Four this year. Okay. Yeah. So but he but he um yeah dominated last year. But this year when he was off at, towards the end, it was Cepeda for now and Vindigo all together. And they were kind of, it was raining. It was not very nice weather at all. Instead of finishing on an uphill, it had an uphill and then it had um, two or three Ks of downhill after that. And so, you know, Vindigo did not want to go to the line with anybody there. So it was one K to go in 900 meters or so. He really put hard in. And Cepeda was kind of like dropping off before that a little bit too. And so he, but Bernal looked pretty darn good up to that point. And then after Vindigo got away, Bernal chased for a little while by himself. And then as he crossed to the top, he looked back and waited. Actually, he motioned for Cepeda to come up. He's like, come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Let's chase together. So he so he probably lost a few seconds there and maybe gained some back. But they ended up 28 seconds um, up. But yeah, Bernal looked good. And like you said, at Tour Columbia, 
he looked really strong there. He wasn't dominating by any means, but he was certainly strong and, you know, coming back from his horrific crash still. Yeah, we don't know. Well, yeah. well just just uh, maybe leading up to this race was a one day race, a classic VAR. Uh, Lenny Martinez, who finished fourth today, he, he won yeah. by um, racing all the way to the line. Oh, yeah. You I see saw Tobias that. Holland Johannes and um, celebrate early, which, wow, when, when are riders. <laughs> when did they, the where did they get to learn? Did you see the video? Because he didn't celebrate early. He celebrated really early. I mean, it was oh, like, really. it was a, you know, it was it crusted so it was not not strictly uphill but crusting the top there but like 10 15 meters to go <laughs> he, he sat up basically and started lifting his arm up and and just coasting soft pedaling it in and then yeah martinez well, Rowan Bardet was on the same time too in third mm. and mike woods just a second behind so they're all yeah there was a group behind him it wasn't like he was clear by enough to do what he was doing yeah so that yeah. was big kevin, mistake. kevin mark american for team dsm for mike post nl eighth on yeah. the day very good it was an unsung hero for dsm really he's one of those you know worker bees domestiques that kills himself day in day out and provides a really essential role to dsm for a lot of years now and uh doesn't get much credit but he's he's a super strong rider who's super valuable right well um ah. Just lost my train of thought there real quick. Well, just go back to the race real quick, too. So it's in northern part of Spain. I don't know if every year it's bad weather or not, but it feels like this year is bad Camino, weather. Last Gran year's Camino or the, the one that's going on now? Oh, Gran Camino, yeah. 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 But that has a lot of big uh, climbers. It is, is um, a climbing race, for sure. Yeah. You know? But uh, Gudo and McCarthy was there. Um, you know, Carapaz and McCarthy came in together. Or McCarthy, rather. He McCarthy. So Hugh Carapaz. Carthy. Carthy came in together for EF, so that they looked strong there too. Guerrero from Movistar was there. Uh, Uderbrooks from uh, Vismo was there at the top right. too. At least Lenny Martinez. So it was, it was a lot of climbing guys, you know. It was um, and people were guys you would expect to be there. Yeah, and it but was, it's just so early in the in the season to see these guys. I mean, doing I don't know. It's just well, but last year, like we said, we talked about last year when Benigo yeah. dominated this by so much. You know, we're like, is it too early? Um, no, obviously it wasn't for him. I think it depends again on their goals. You know, we see uh, <clears throat> Walt making his debut, really his debut this weekend, right? Right, and, right. You know, that, so that high-end yeah. classic, that gravelly race that, but Pogaccio won last year. He got a screw in his wheel, and but Jan yeah. Tratnik and and Sepkus were up there, and they finished well. Yeah. But but that um, race well there, yeah. That was. Uh, uh, Decathlon, Azure Desert, the, I mean, they they've been coming, starting out really strong, winning. Again, they can use their. Oh, I was just thinking too, Ben O'Connor, like you were saying, how um, Vinigo doesn't want to go to the line. He doesn't have such a fast finish. But Ben yeah. O'Connor said he he wouldn't win in a sprint, so that was his plan to be able to win, is is to attack and go hard further out to get a gap, hold it. So that, you have to know what kind of rider you are and what what you can do to be able to win and not take any chances to leave it down if you don't have a quick finish because there are definitely fast guys that have a quick finish I mean, and then climbers climber guys that have a fast finish yeah and everything's relative so i saw lionel messi's right playing for miami or something like that now and yes yeah and and, and he's was hurt some last year so this is his first full year and, and he's a magician on the field right now. You know? He still had a good year last year, even being hurt. Yes. <laughs> or not yeah. playing, but yeah. But he's not playing for Barcelona. And he's getting older too. You know, right. Yeah, he's 36, I think, this year. So, um, so relative in that field, Messi is, you know, the most skilled person out there. You know, even at 36. You know, right. But but so sure. so, he, so he knows what he can do in that situation. And Ben O'Connor in some races might be okay going on the line, people. But at the same time, like you said, at this point. Some of these guys who are the world's best climbers have a pretty good kick too. So yeah, you know, it's like we saw Kevin off one, Kevin one in um Columbia, you know, and if he tried the same maybe thing today, he couldn't pull it off. You know, so you really have to know, like you said, you know, you have to know who you're racing with, who's with you, what how hard it's been up to that point, who you can beat, when, where, and how. And and it's it's very tactical because these guys are all phenomenal. They can win in so many different types of races. Um, but in this specific race, how can they win? It's, it's it takes a lot of a lot of things to be All able right. to play that out for right. sure well just uh we're not going to be quite as long today on our podcast so i'm going to work i'm going to germany i know you've got tons to do it's friday we wanted to squeeze this in we missed 
uh, last week, you, you had a pretty busy schedule. Actually, we got to see each other last Sunday, so we worked together. But yeah, um, yeah we're, we're, I, I just want to touch so real briefly, though, on the whole dog Harvey, because t- talking again, like, are these top writers that are you know, writing so well so early? Are they, um, you know, are they just coming out firing and strong? We'll have their maybe a little bit low where they reload and get ready for the ones that count the most. But Remco Avenapol. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. winning the Bulldog well, Garvey again, very nice. Winning the overall, but that got beat twice by by. Uh, yeah, the Danny Martinez. Yeah, so he's not as fast as Martinez on the uphill at this point of the year, at least. But yeah, and he doesn't time it as well too. I think again, Remco relies on his brute strength a lot more times than Martinez was very good about timing those. You know, knowing when to go and and yeah, he's he's a little, obviously a little more experienced. So. Right, but but what I, I guess from the whole race, going back to where I was talking earlier at the beginning, alluding to how we like to emphasize how well the Americans are doing in the time trial at that race, it was uh, how long of a time? Well, it was a 27 minute effort. So, um, Ramco Evans will won, of course, being world champion time trials, but Magnus Sheffield, oh. a young American for Ineos Grenadiers, finished second at 16 seconds. 13 seconds all of Stefan Kung, you know, the former European time trial. Right. But, but then Isaac <laughs> Del Toro was fourth, fourth a, yeah. a young yeah. Phenom for UAE Emirates. But they, these guys are ahead of uh, Filippo Ghana and Bob Van Aert. And Ben Healy, Healy had a good time trial too, and he's not a yeah. brown time trialist, but he's a super strong guy. You know? All right. All right. But I just yeah, wanted to, to mention that. that. Ghana, Ghana said he's not, he's not quite there. He's not quite right. You know, so he's not. Oh, yeah. Well, see, that's what I'm just, I mean, in my mind, like, okay, that's like a normal start of the year at the beginning to not be at that high, high end. But then you've got other guys that are already flying yeah. and, and going very strongly. So, well, Van Art was 11th, that one too, you know, and, and uh, I think he had an issue. The issue because he said he's, yeah, he, he would like to be in the time trial. I Something think. happened in it. Um, yeah. And, and Magnus Sheffield actually is going for the Olympic spot too. And so I think you know it's different. Evan Poole is world as world champion. I think he's an automatic spot in the Olympics if he wants it for sure. And Sheffield doesn't have it. Kung probably has an automatic for Switzerland. It will get the spot for sure. Isaac Del Toro. I mean, for Mexico, maybe he does because I'm not sure how much strong Mexico is for things like that too. But the, a lot of times the younger guys, in the earlier parts of the season, it's their opportunity to shine because they won't be able to shine later yeah. on too. So I can and see. And also they 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 recover quicker, I think too. <laughs> when you're younger, yeah. you. Yeah, and I think that they come into the season more anxious too. So yeah. they're, you know, new to things. And they're like, well, if I'm not in this kind of shape, I'm not going to compete. And then they find out, oh, I guess I probably overdid it a little bit at the beginning of the year too. And we've seen that. Even right. Nielsen Paulus, was it two years ago he came in and just tore up the beginning of the year? And he was relatively experienced. He had won Savannah Sebastian already at that point and and then tore up the season at the beginning of the year and then and then kind of faded more towards the end and then had a picked towards in the middle and picked up a little bit at the end but um it's just it's hard i mean there's very few people that are like pagacha that can ride strongly you know and you know and some evan pulled but, but even he's uh, having a more conservative start where he's he's not racing yet yeah yeah so um yeah it, that's what makes cycling interesting right too because if you're in a league where you have a championship at the end you know i mean we see some hockey teams doing this and we used to see the Red Wings back in the day when after they won a couple Stanley Cups they would not push quite as hard during the regular season knowing they could turn it on when they needed to at the end all you have to do is make the playoffs and you're fine you know so um you know in some some ways that's like when you get more seasoned you know and and you can kind of know when you can go hard when you don't go hard what's important to you so Al Philippe this year is in a contract year for example do you see Patrick Lefevre was criticizing him because Marlene Rouleau is um Russo is a is his partner and she's director of the Tour de France Feminine by Zwift. Uh, um, and she and he was like blaming her. Hey, he's got her. She's got him drinking too much and stuff. Too. It was interesting. I, th- I but, already backstepped on those comments yeah, too. Yeah. too. Yeah. But but the thing was, Al Philippe though was like, hey, you know, he's already had a good fi- good finish in Tour de Under. He rode really strong up along. Uh, it was fourth, I think. You know, he jumped a little too early. <laughs> I think he thought the finish was before it actually was. But he's strong. He's riding well. But he's not worried about barnstorming right now. He doesn't need to have all these really great results because he knows what he needs to do to be really good. And and him winning races right now isn't going to be as important winning him later too. So he's in good shape. He's riding well. I expect to see him maybe having some top finishes later on. 
but um, it's just different when you're older, when you're younger, and how you approach the season and why you need to. So people in contract years again, you know, it's more important for them to have results and results early because a lot of the contract negotiations are tied up by or wrapped up by like June, you know, or July. Yeah, and so, so Dow Quickstep, as much as they'd want to keep their top riders, are seem to be fine with letting top riders go because of their budget constraints, yeah. and so they they're not gonna do everything they can to satisfy a rider like Ala Philippe who could move somewhere else, even though he's been there so long, you would think, ah, oh, how could he go ride for someone else? But it'll happen. Yeah, it'll happen. Yeah, there's so, the like, you know, their, their budget's getting bigger and bigger and more now with Red Bull, you know, too, and it's getting bigger and bigger and stuff. Yeah, so those kind of teams, though, you're right, they, they can't afford to pay, you know, some of these guys. And then when they let someone go, you know, it's it's sometimes their choice. Sometimes the people want a different environment, and we've seen that a couple of teams, couple of people leave Ineos this year that are racing well already too. And sometimes this the in different environment gives you a new you know sure. perspective on things too. Yeah, well, let's look uh, let's look forward to this weekend because it's a big weekend. Like I said, the opening weekend really a lot of people might consider this is when it really starts. The the Belgian Classic season is going to go from now. The Cobble Classics, I guess, goes through Perry Roubaix, which, which is weekend after Easter. But uh, then we got some of the uh, Ardennes Classics. So it's really classic seasons from now through a good part of April. Yeah, it is. It's, it's Yeah. And, and for someone to hold, we've seen people hold form for up to three weeks in this, too, and, and do really well, too. Um, so, yeah, you know, I kind of wonder who's going to do well. And actually, too, while it's the only one doing, the big, the big top. Yeah, the big three. Yeah, man, it's yeah. I was. He was on such good form, winning yeah. everything, and I guess he's backed off a little bit to look at his goals because um, winning Omla Zuzba doesn't have really that much of an impact on how well you're going to do. And, and the most important, the monuments that the Tour of Flanders or the Perry Rouet um, double weekend, which is you know still five weeks away from those. Yeah, Big and races. sometimes people do take a little break like that. So I can see that he really had an early season, I wouldn't say peak, but a really high spot, and then takes a week or two we regroup just train some do some of that zone two longer stuff not worry about um having to you know be really on 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 now and then have to be on for like i said for more than you know two three weeks you can't really be at your absolute best so he's probably then going to ramp back up and like you said try and be you know for those peak races where he has a chance to win those you know both flanders and roubaix are ones that are certainly he'd like to get um yeah, if he can be as absolute best, then that's yeah. That. And Matteo Vanderpool then, uh, after winning the Cyclocross World Championship, you know he's resetting for him for his bigger goals. But Val Van Art now with Visma Lisa bike, he's already ramping up now, and it's it's you know the big opportunity for Visma to start their steamrolling through the classics. But it, you know they they've won these earlier ones, but they haven't been winning the. The, the biggest ones, the big monuments lately. So those are the ones that he really wants to do. So I was reading the Bell and News article about how tough a place it is for them, the Visible Lisa Bike, and for <laughs> well, Van Art to perform. You know, if he wins, it's just like, okay, yeah. But if he doesn't win, then it's a bit. So, um, it's, ex it's expected that he will win at least one of those races. And if he doesn't, then it, everybody's disappointed, right? Right, but uh, but my my American take, like I said, my American focus is Matteo Jorgensen now with the new team Visma Lisa Bike, I'm uh, starting out in this race, and and he's maybe falls. He's still on the younger side that he wants to show his new team his good form. That maybe he has an opportunity then in a race like this to make a late move that could go to the line because there's. You know, other people behind, you know, who's going to change, like, like, it's an opportunity, I think, for him to do something, maybe because he's going to be full on support for sure, you know, when it gets closer to those big, you know, ones, I keep right. talking about the Tour of Flanders and, and yeah, uh, we saw, Bay. so, so that's, you well, know, the Barley one last year, um, we've seen Walvin Art, you know, give, give some support, yeah, win. all right, so. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. my big hope. So uh, we'll see what kind of let's just see how they're running uh, as a team. Um, you can expect them to to go strong, but Arnold De Lee, I think he's looking pretty good. Pretty uh, good. Yeah, not even a, a huge early season, but he's been there, right? Yeah, he's he like uh, two years ago when he was winning races early on, and he was just winning by brute strength without. <laughs> That such tactics or whatever you, you get him some better tactics and conserving himself 
he, he could um, fin it very strongly. So, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Lotto, still... Lotto's had some good right racing racing this year too so far. They they were they were really on the outs kind of last year and and they need some results too. So if Lee can come through with a big win, that's huge for the day. And we've seen that too again with Israel Premier Tech. We've seen some teams that have struggled in the past if they can build up any kind of point total now because we're in year two out of year three right now in terms of relegation. So uh, the, every year is every race is important. They were actually I saw something recently said too some of these races that aren't quite as big like there's some smaller stage races um and then there's some one day races and in the one day races are almost more points than the stage races right. are, or a stage of the stage races too so people are jockeying around you know in terms of their team where they're putting racers and you know sometimes you have some really big racers go to some not as prestigious races because if they get a win then it's a ton of points too right well Monte Mahorge was riding really well he's going to be there Beating um, you know, Bora right has still a good team, but there seem to be more, so much more um, week-long tour and grand tour focus now. So, yeah, uh, Tom Pickock. I guess you can't forget to mention Tom Pickock. Pickock's gonna be there this weekend too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just and he's racing well. So. Yep. For the Americans, Lawson Craddock will be. Um, I guess Luke Durbridge is there. Maybe he's their guy, but Lawson Craddock is a guy that could be in the breaker to help out. And Riley Sheehan is riding for Israel Premier Tech. So Riley um, is the other American there involved. I looked over at the women's side too. A lot of Kopecky and you know, SD works are um, going to be dominant again this year. I don't think there's any way around that. Team SD works. Uh, Pro Time is her name, but with a lot of Kopecky and Demi Volering and Lorena Vivas. I mean, if, who's going to stop them? But there are a few Americans there as well. Ruth Edwards is writing for Human Powered Health. Yeah. And Chris, um, Kirsten um, Faulkner writing for EF Education. And she hasn't really done a whole lot yet this year, so I'm wondering what her fitness is like, too. She, I think, did she crash earlier on not too long ago or something? But something that I think brought up to a little slower start of the year, but she's super, super strong. So I hope that each other have a, a great year. And this, yeah, this is a good terrain for her. Yeah, exactly. Give us a little indication, yeah. Right, and then uh, Megan Dastra, who's still so young, but such a great writer for DSM. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But, uh, looking ahead to Sunday, though, we have to, I mean, I don't know if it's just because American slant from the article I read on Velo, but Luke Lamperti um, has started out really well and fast for a um, yeah. little quick step. And maybe... Yeah. Maybe he'll well, get a chance to a fast finish. He's not racing Saturday, so Kuhn and Russell Kuhn, you know, is one of those that, that really suits him because he's fast in a small group and yeah. he's uh, strong riders. Maybe, I don't know, longer race than... Oh, he's been racing the last he's couple of years at high level. Second places, too, where he's, you know, he's, he's, he's been on the cusp of, of being there, too. So, um, yeah, I think I think that, uh, yeah. It depends For Sudal Quickstep, I think I said Lotto, Sudal Quickstep. Yeah, yeah, for for sure. Um, well, that's a strong team there too. Al Fleet's going to be there. Askren's going to be there. Um, Lampard's going to be there too. Peterson. So I mean, I think he's got a strong either support cast or he's part of a cast that could be. And they're, you know, in the past used to be tactical wizards in terms of getting people towards the end. And I think that they still are good at that, even if they don't have quite the firepower they used to. So yeah, it'd be fun to see if he does well too. Um, and Alexander Kristoff is still going well at his age. How old is he? 34? 36, I think. 36? Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. I saw him get a couple of good finishes Yeah. already this year. This will be the first time where we're not going to mention a certain retired rider that <laughs> we kept thinking maybe he's going to come out and do well again. Peter Sakhan, not not here. We're not going to talk about him. He had a heart surgery. See that? He had, he had heart surgery. Wow. Yeah, he finished a mountain bike race, and his heart rate was sustained over 200 beats. So I don't know if it's an AFib situation where they go in there and they zap it with the electricity and they reset it or not. But I didn't read the whole article, but I just read a little bit. Um, yeah, so yeah, he wouldn't he wouldn't have a chance to do that. But you know what, Edvo Bolsenhagen, who was a late signing from yeah. the Catalan Age Jar, the last yeah, I was surprised. I saw his name on the team. I thought, oh, when did he sign there? So yeah, really signing too. So he, you know, uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see because I, you know, but but certainly. He's a Peter Sagan type favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, it's, it's almost shocking how much you know Bosnagan has won. You know, I mean, I, I remember seeing 
when he signed, they went over his list of accomplishments and wow. I mean, he's, his, his career is even deeper than I, and I, I know he's always such a good writer, but you know, he's just been writing you know, as a pro since 2006 and, and, uh, He's had so many accomplishments and stuff too. So he's 36 years old. Um, does he have something left with him? Yeah. Uh, well, same as Kristoff then. So. Yeah. Yeah. Kristoff certainly again. Yeah. There's no you. You don't discount Kristoff in any situation like where it's, where it's a hard person's race where it comes down to a even a big. Yeah. yeah. Sp- and it's race. gonna be wet and cool at coldest, so more into his. Let's, let's yeah. Let's look wet. Kind of kind of weather. Oh, I got a Lascano or Lascano from Movie Star. He's. These are like the best Spanish classics guy since one Tony Flexor. Maybe he's coming up um, very strongly last year, and I, he, um, he's a guy I think has a has outside chance to do well. Yeah, that's kind of uh, so. Yeah, I'd say Fred Wright maybe too. He's a good finisher of a hard race too. Um, you know, and did you see the Andrew August is on the start list for Sunday? For ah, is he? All right, yeah. that's great. Get that experience right away. Right, he's yeah, a, what, teenager no. still. No expectations at all. No, no to get the experience. Finishes the race, that'd be great. But yeah, yeah, but they, I think that there was a lot of hope for him to do well. Uh, I don't know if expectation, but hope. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, this is this is how they used to do it back in the day, right? You'd right. turn to the fire and let him get burned a lot, and then come out stronger. So, and I, August, yeah, yeah, who knows? Who knows? But all right. Well, uh, it's it's so easy to just keep talking about all the all the great racing going on, but. We're gonna have to wrap this one up so I can get ready for for my trip to Germany. You can get your things done, and we'll um, just leave you like a excitement maybe of what's coming up this weekend. Yeah. For, for the beginning of the year, and and we'll talk about what happens afterwards. Um, before we sign off, uh, we'd like to look at the birthday list. Who's celebrating birthday on the day we're podcasting? And it seems like the last time we podcast, we were doing the birthdays, and and it was the next days. Like oh, is it? we Maybe. always have to check, yeah, because we because we get yeah, yeah we, if we do it after it goes by European time, but definitely yeah. here on the 23rd today, Mark Wilder is his top of the list of Belgian, 55 yeah. years old, uh, raised a bunch for Robo Bank. Um, yeah, he he won the you know, small overalls at the Tour of Britain, Tour of Luxembourg, um, won the GP at Merckx twice, and Rhineland Falls race too so it was um, definitely would win but not the biggest races but yeah super strong guy yeah too. so but jan tratnik yeah jan tratnik i didn't know he's 34. 34. So he's, yeah he's been riding so um well lately and it's it's you know i was really worried about Matteo jorgensen coming into your visma lisa bike with all their strong horsepower but you know some of those guys are getting up there, so he's going to really come in at a good time and get some good experience. So I'm not as concerned as I, as I was when I first found out he was signing for for oh. Bismarck Lisa bike. Yeah. Yeah, and he's Slovenia, Slovenian too. So it's it's yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's there too? Uh, I'm not seeing. Oh. Uh, Jordan <laughs> Schneider is 43 in America, and we'd like to hit see what Americans are selling for their birthday. Um, Sometimes we get thrown off by the flags because the yeah what is the flag that looks like it Malaysian yeah that's it the Malaysian unless you, until you blow it up it's got red stripes and a blue but it's got the the half moon and the star in front of it so <laughs> yeah yeah all right well, I think that's gonna do it we're gonna wrap it up and it's always yeah. great to well, talk to you and, it's, it's we're yeah. racing again here now we raced last weekend at uh, Hinkapi Spring Series started oh, last weekend with races yeah. at Donaldson. And then this weekend we're doing two crits at Rock Hill, and, I, and I'm going to do tomorrow's races at 40 plus, 50 plus, just because I've never raced at a dedicated crit course for in Rock Hill. There's a complex there with the velodrome, the BMX, BMX, which is a world, it's held world championships before, and then national championships have been held many times also too at the velodrome, and then this crit course too. And I've never done the crit course. And someone I was racing with yes last week, I was saying I was going to race, and he goes, oh, I live on the crit course. <laughs> he built a house in that complex too. So there's you know, it's it's where do they have that in America? Not many places. I know they have a dedicated crit course in Colorado Springs, which I've not done a crit on it, but I've ridden on the route. The Fred Cappy, I think, uh, crit course. So, um, but it's not very places have this kind of complex, and so it's, it's it'd be fun to to be there at a place that um, maybe isn't known Rock Hill as you know cycling sure. center of America. I know Greenville certainly getting more and more press. And did you see there's some articles about Enzo Hincapie recently? They did an interview with him. And they keep getting more and more press as well in Green. Uh, like well, 
Well, the the okay, touch on the American racing scene. Well, just real briefly, then the right. Valley Valley of Sun. Yeah, we come see us, Velo. Yeah, uh, team my son raced on Josh Labo. Labo won the um, time trial, and they held on to the overall to win the GC it there. It was a battle. battle with the road race and the Criterium at the Valley of Sun. CS Vela already getting an overall GC win, and they're racing, uh, doing team camp and racing at the um, Tucson Bicycle Classic this yeah. weekend. But Project Echelon is going to be racing there, and they just return after racing in Europe, so they're going to be flying well. Although Tyler Stites and and Sam Boardman are not racing some of their top guns, but oh. they have plenty of firepower, so they'll probably be really strong there in Tucson. But uh, yeah, um, racing going on all over now, and good, good luck to you then. I hope you have a great race and enjoy, and hope to hear about it later. All right. Thanks, Dean. All right. Thanks, Ray. Bye now. Bye now.